Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 5, Lesson 10, just dealing with multiplying today, so we're going to get some more practice multiplying sign numbers. All right, so looking over here, we're looking at this first section down below on matching expressions. They want you to match expressions that are equal to each other. So to do this, what you're going to need to do is you need to go ahead and multiply out the different uh, numbers here to see what you come up with. So for example, I know that negative 1 times 12 is a negative 12 value there. Okay, I also can look down here and say that negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3, but 3 times a negative 4 is also a negative 12 right there. And over here I have a negative 2 times a 6, which also is a negative 12. And so for the sake of this one, I know that this one and this one and this one all seem to go together. By the same manner, I can also take a look at over here, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, and 2 times 6 is 12, so that's a positive 12, right? Over here, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, and 3 times 4 is 12, okay? And up here, negative 1 times negative 12 is a positive 12. So these are all values of, that are positive 12, and so those ones go together there, and those are the ones that match each other there. You can do the rest of those on your own, and what you're going to have are some values that are equal to perhaps 15s and negative 15s. You'll have some 8s and some negative 8s. If you get something beside that, you might want to double check your work and see what you're doing. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says evaluate the expressions in one of the columns. Your partner will work on the other one, other column, and check your partner. So you basically have two different things here. And one of you is going to do column A, and one of you does column B. So split yourselves up and figure out who's doing A, who's doing B, and then check and see what your solutions were, if they're the same or different. On column A, if you're working on your own, I'll do A, you do B, and see if you match mine. On column A, 790 divided by 10 is 79. Negative 6 over 7 times 7, those reduced down, become 1 and 1. We're left with just a negative 6 here. On this side, 2.1 times a negative 2 is going to be a negative 4.2. And then 2.5 times a negative 3.25. We've worked that one out there. Look at my notes here. I have 2.5 times 3.25. We're going to have a negative 8.125. And finally down here, we have a negative times a positive is a negative, And a negative times a negative will be a positive solution here. So we do 10 times 3.2 times 7.3 and we have 233.6 and that's a positive answer there. So that's my A. Once you do B and check and see did you get those same numbers there and then you can compare and see what's different or what's the same. All right so that's it really for today. So for our summary, our summary today is just remember that a positive times a positive is always positive a negative times a negative is also positive. And a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative is always negative. Okay? And then one more thing we added today, which is kind of an interesting one. A negative times a negative times a negative is also negative. It gets you back to that negative solution there, which is what we have right there. All right? Let's take a look at tonight's homework, which is a lot of multiplication. of positive and negative numbers. They also include in here fractions and decimals and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and help you out with the positive and negative side of things and you could do the math part. So a negative times a positive, so a solution should be negative and you can do that on your own, 12 times uh, one third, right? Here we have a negative times a negative, so we should have a positive solution here for this one. Here's a positive times a negative, so I should have a negative solution there. And a negative times a negative gives you a positive solution there. Again, multiply those out and see what you get. Let's say, for example, that I had one like negative 15 times 1 fifth, okay, something like that. I could reduce this, right, or I could just multiply it out. I could do 15 over 5. That goes in there one time. That goes in three times. And 3 times 1 is 3. Keep the negative sign, negative 3. Again, that's not the problem, but you want similar to that, so you work those out on your own. Number two, evaluate the expression. So negative one times two, 
right? So this part here gives you what? That becomes negative two. Negative two times three is gonna be a negative six. Do this part here, negative one times negative two is a positive two times three is gonna equal positive six. And here, negative one times negative two is positive two times a negative three is gonna equal a negative six. So what I was doing is just doing the first two and then making a new number. First two, new number, first two, new number, and then continuing on with the equation. Order each set of numbers from least to greatest. All right, so over here I have a series of positive and negative numbers. So I know, for example, that zero is gonna be here, that's fine. I have a negative six, which is less than zero. I have a negative two, which is between zero and negative six. I have an eight, which would be over here. And I have a four, which is between zero and four. All right, that one's not too bad. This next one, B, might be a little bit trickier for some of y'all, okay? I have lots of negative numbers and I have one positive, so I know my biggest number is 5.5. That one's the biggest one there. Now I could probably look and see which one is my smallest number. I have negative five, negative 5.2, negative five and a half, which is the same as negative 5.5, and then negative five over two is actually negative 2.5. Okay, so just make them all decimals here. So in terms of what's the next smallest, we would say negative 2.5. After that, we would then say, well, let's go with negative five, and then we're gonna go to negative 5.2, and then we'll end up with negative 5.5 at the end. All right, so it kinda go a little backwards there, but that is what you end up doing when that works out. Okay, number four. 40 plus negative 30 equals zero. Write another sum of two numbers that equals zero. Again, you can make up what you want, okay? So you could say 47 plus negative 47 equals zero. Or have some of three numbers that equal zero. All right, maybe you do a 15 plus a negative seven plus a negative eight. So what am I doing there? I'm doing a sum, it's addition, seven and eight together make negative 15, add the positive 15, you get it down to zero. All right, sum of four numbers that equals zero, okay? None of which are opposites, all right? So I could do nine plus six, that gets me to my head, 15, and I can add to that negative seven plus a negative eight, because the negatives together make a negative 15, combine those up, and we end up with zero. So that's just an idea. You can come up with your own. Probably if you're watching this and doing what I write down and your whole class has the same solutions, it says you didn't do it on your own. So think of your own way of doing that. That'd be a great idea. All right, number five. Number five. Number five says a submarine is searching for underwater features. It's accompanied by a small aircraft and an underwater robotic vehicle, okay? At one time, the aircraft is 200 meters above the surface. So I'm gonna draw my surface here. Oops, get on the paper here for you. And we're gonna say that I have an aircraft that's up here that's at 200 meters above the surface. The submarine is 55 meters below the surface. So the submarine is down here at 55. Here's my sub at 55. And then my underwater robotic vehicle, robotic vehicle is 227 below the surface. So I have another one down here underwater robotic is at 227 below the surface. So what is the difference in height between the submarine and the aircraft? Again, we said before, what we wanna do is take a look at the difference. And our difference means we're gonna be doing some subtraction here. The difference between these two, between the submarine and the aircraft, all right? So my difference is gonna be, I would say, we're gonna do the 200, Okay, and we're going to subtract the difference here is negative, subtract it from here, we're at negative 55 since we're below the surface. Okay, I could also write this as submarine, negative 55, um, and we're going to subtract it from it, the 200, negative 200. Okay, in this case my signs are the same. Right, if I add the opposite, so I find the sum, keep the sign the same, and I'm at negative 255. Over here, I would add those together, and I end up with 255, okay? 
So I end up either with a negative number or a positive number, but the same exact uh, in terms of digits, 255, 255. So in terms of the difference, since we're talking about difference, difference can be positive or negative. And in our case here, since we're just dealing with actual like distance, so to speak, even though the next one says distance, we'd probably go ahead and keep this at the positive 255 would be the best one to do there, okay? So that's that's what I would say. Um, again, it's just more of a matter of like, how how does your teacher want you to set that up? Or what are they telling you to do there? You might wanna ask them about that one to say, hey, what would you say? What would you do in terms of the difference there? It really depends on which one you do first and which one you do last, right? So that's kind of the key there. If you do one first and one last, you get a different, different solution. So my answer key says 255. Um, but that is doing the aircraft minus this one. Whereas a previous lesson it said to do the first thing listed minus a second, which is this one here, giving you a difference that's negative. So it, it's, it's, it's a good question. Distance though, is always positive, right? So the distance between the underwater robot and the submarine, we're looking at the distance between the robot and submarine is 227 and subtract the difference there, 55. 227 minus 55 is equal to um, 172. I could say that it's negative 227, right, minus a, a negative uh, 55. That'll work out the same. I'd end up with a negative 172 as an answer. But because it's distance, I do the absolute value. So I still have 172 as my distance between those two vehicles there. All right, number six, Claire is cycling at a speed of 12 miles per hour. If she starts at a position chosen as zero, what will the position be after 45 minutes? Okay, so she's doing 12 miles every hour, right? 12 miles every hour, and she's gone for 45 minutes. 45 minutes is the same as three-fourths of an hour. This is the kind of the key thing you'd be able to figure out on your own. It's not one, it's four, and you're not gonna multiply by 45, you're multiplying by actually three fourths because we're not doing a full hour. She goes 12 miles in an hour, she didn't do the whole thing, okay? Think of it this way. Here is our tape diagram, so to speak. We cut this in, into sections, right? This is a fourth, here is a half, here is three fourths, and here's the whole hour. So in the whole hour, she's gonna go 12, right? But we're not gonna include this part right there we're only doing three of those chunks. So what are those three chunks really made up of? How much is this and this and this? This is 12 times three fourths of it, or three fourths of the whole thing. So we do 12 times three fourths, this reduces to one and three, and three times three is nine. So she's gonna travel nine miles. Han is cycling at a speed of negative eight miles per hour. If he starts at the same zero point, what will his position be after 45 minutes? So same idea, negative eight times three fourths for the 45 minutes, and we reduce, this becomes two, I'm sorry, this becomes one, and that becomes two. Negative two times three is negative six uh, miles. Now, does that mean he's gone negative six miles? No, it just means in terms of the distance from the zero point, he's gone the other direction. What will the distance between them be after 45 minutes? So that distance there is gonna be the absolute value. So as a picture here, if here's zero, one person's at negative six, the other person's at nine. So how far is it from here to here is our question. So we have a nine, we have a negative six, and so we wanna add those two things together. And so we have nine plus six equals 15. And that's what we have. I could do the difference, which would be nine minus a minus six, which is still gonna be 15 and we're good to go. All right, down below we have fill in the missing numbers in these equations, seeing how we get there. So we have a negative, we wanna end up with a negative, so I need to include a positive value there. And that positive value is gonna be positive two. Here I have a negative value, I have a positive, so I need a negative value here. So what times three gets you to 15? five, we'll keep it negative, okay? And over here we have uh, four, getting to 32, we have a positive, keeping it positive, we're gonna have a positive eight. And then negative 49 times three is gonna give us an answer here. A negative times a positive is a negative, and we're gonna say it's negative 147. All right, that's it for the day. Hope that helps you out, and we'll see you next time.